Hello. Today I wanted to talk about a movie that's um <clears throat> that's 80 years old this year and it's regarded as one of the greatest um, and in, in some cases um the greatest film noir ever made and that is Double Indemnity. Um in short, uh Fred McMurray plays a insurance salesman uh, named Walter Neff, uh, who goes to, uh, Mr. Uh, Dietrich's, uh, home, where he meets his wife, uh, Phyllis, played by Barbara Stanwyck, and, um, uh, uh, they're talking about, uh, some insurance that he, uh, that her husband has to pay on, and as they're talking, mention about accident insurance because you know he's in the oil business and he often goes down to the oil fields right where you know they're actually you know pumping the oil where it can be very dangerous and as they're speaking and talking you know uh, you know accident insurance comes up and uh yeah it's just uh from there uh, a plot starts to uh, or the pl a plan starts to uh, be concocted where uh, uh, she might have uh, her husband uh, be killed or something so that way she can get some money from insurance uh, that he that he would have which in the midst of uh, uh, doing a Going back over to speak to him in person, uh, talking about uh, the insurance that you know he's supposed to have a payment on. Uh, he has it to where after a while signs uh, papers regarding uh, uh, accident insurance, and uh, so they have a, a plan where. After a while, they, uh, they they set up the plan of what they're going to do. Like, uh, Walter and uh, Phyllis, they start to, you know, get together. And, uh, you know, begin to get, you know, uh, get all the details out as to what to do uh, in terms of killing her husband and... Once that happens, um, things seem to be fine, but then uh, Keyes, uh, the claims manager, played by Edward G. Robinson, you know, he, uh, at feet, he suspects something is wrong and just doesn't seem sit right with him. And so he's trying to figure out what's going on with this whole thing. And we've seen earlier in the film that Robinson's character he gets something in his gut <laughs> yeah, like uh, and so uh, you know yeah, what he sees uh, believes something is fishy or something of the sort he trusts his instinct and they're never wrong it's just you know as the film goes on he's trying to figure out what's going on <clears throat> you know uh, the two of them are getting nervous as it seems like he has an idea what happened because uh, the president of their uh, the insurance uh, company that the two of them work for uh, believes the suicide, uh, but uh, keys it doesn't make sense and all that. It's just various things and details. It's just interesting just to see how things unfold and the f film uh, is narrated basically by uh, uh, Neff um, you know, Fred McMurray plays Neff obviously Barbara Stranwyck plays <laughs> Phyllis and uh, yeah um, this is an excellent uh, uh, 
version of the film uh, the, the 4k and the two blu-rays with the movie and more special features um, there are special features on the first blu-ray disc um, for those who don't have it this version and um, Barton Keys is the name of uh, Robinson's character, and um, I don't want to say any more because I know like that some people don't uh, haven't seen films like this before. Um, this movie is uh, co-written and directed by Billy Wilder, who has made uh, many excellent films and. Uh, he made a film the last weekend. Um, the year after this, and that film won multiple Oscars. This film was nominated for Best Picture, Director, Adapted Screenplay, Actress, um, Score, and other awards. But it didn't win. Um, it went to... Uh, 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 Come My Way, uh, a Bing Crosby film, who won Best Actor. Um, Fred McMurray, uh, Coming My Way, yeah, Coming My Way. I believe that is the film, yeah. But, you know, um, and I've seen that before, and that's a fine movie. Um, but, you know, it's one of those things where when you look at the various films, that came out in 1944 and what were up for the top awards a lot of people would say this should have won and i would basically agree um but uh i think barbara stanwick should have won best actress edward g robinson should have won been nominated and won supporting actor um he was never nominated for an academy award um and uh Billy Wilder should have uh, won director in screenplay and the film should have got best picture. But regardless of the, the lack of awards or not, this is a, a, an excellent film. One of the best films, you know, it's about, a, you know, it t takes place in 1940s Los Angeles based off of a book. Um obviously uh, I haven't read it but I've heard enough about the book itself to where it seems like you know uh, various aspects that were changed seem to be for the for the film seem to be changed for the best um, and I don't want to see or t say what all happens at the end but obviously if you've seen the film you know but if you haven't seen it It'd be kind of cool to uh, watch it. Um, this has been out for a while. Um, 2022. So, you know. I am pretty sure the Barnes & Noble sale is still going on. For Criterion. And if so, you could get this for 50% off. In store or online. <laughs> But yeah, this is a film I think is worth watching. It's worth seeing at least once. Um, Barbara Stanwyck really uh, was able to show her range as an actress, you know. And uh, you know Fred McMurray, he didn't really play too many parts like this. Um, especially later on, he became like you know sitcom dad and more family friendly films and it's not bad not necessarily bad at all but you know you, you kind of get he get, gets into um you know a certain kind of role of sorts and then uh that's all people think where uh stuff like this shows that he could do something different though i guess you could say you know with this film barbara stanwick started to sort of play similar characters like this um and she was very good at it um i've heard from some people that 
you know, she had, she acted in a certain way, which she wasn't before. She didn't seem to be super pleasant. And, uh, man, in a way, it's probably because of a film like this, you know, uh, this character is very interesting. You know, she is a, she's like the femme fatale for film noir. And, uh, in many films after this, tried to replicate, uh, you know, not you know, like the style and the look and the, kind of the storytelling and so on. Um, also, Edward G. Robinson, you know, he's usually a gangster. Ah, so yeah, well, you know, pop your fall lead. He doesn't play that kind of character here, and it's really cool to see him. Uh, I mean, he's you know, fast talking and everything, but you know, he, he's he's very good. He's he's really good. And, uh, uh, Going My Way, that was the film that won Best Picture. Coming My Way, come up. I, I just knew that was wrong, but yeah, Going My Way, that was the movie that won. Uh, and again, that was not a bad film, but yeah. Anyway, all the three of these, uh, people, they all were able to show they could do more, and that was really cool to see. Especially if you've seen any of these three in other movies or shows or what have you. And in many ways, they kind of, you know, which especially back then in Hollywood, though, this is still true today. But, you know, if they played a certain character really well, you know, they, you know, uh, whichever uh, studio they were contracted to, they would generally get parts uh, similar, uh, to that, uh, to some extent, you know, they might, you know, depending on how popular they are, they'll get all kinds of scripts to look over, but in many ways, it's like, well, this is the kind of part you were really good at, so keep playing that kind of part, which, on one hand, it's like, could be good job security for a good while, but also it's like, kind of getting typecast and stuck <laughs> as a sort of, uh, 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 kind of character, you know, being typecast and all, but this film really showed how, uh, all three could, performers could, uh, stretch and be different, even though I guess for Stanwyck, she sort of played roles where, personality-wise, she would be sort of similar to Phyllis, uh, Dietrichson in this film, and um, and we also learn some things about her in this movie that I have not revealed, and also her husband has a daughter, um, and uh, we learn some things about her daughter, and from her daughter, for step, step stepdaughter, we learn some things about uh, uh, Phyllis, which can be quite alarming, <laughs> um, but you know, again, I don't want to say too much. I mean, I've already given a good chunk of the film away, but again, that's kind of like the setup to how things are going and how these two have to be very careful, you know, uh, in terms of going, you know, about their day-to-day -day lives and, and in terms of also interacting with each other and all that. So very good film. Great film noir. Um, this is definitely one of my favorite film noir movies. Um, at the top or near the top. Um, I know the Maltese Falcon is often debated whether or not it's film noir. Because, you know, there are elements of film noir with, like, the lighting and the camera work. And the camera work in here is excellent. The music is great. I mean, so much is... Uh, fantastic honestly and um really worth uh watching i believe at least once and you can definitely when you watch this you will absolutely see other films even i guess current like noir type films or neo-noir you could see certain uh, influences of sorts uh that didn't necessarily a perhaps originate, you know, there's other movies 
prior, like a film noir, but you know, this really set the standard for film noir um, when this came out in 44. So yeah, definitely a movie worth watching. I think that uh, if you're into film noir or classic movies, you'll enjoy this movie. And even if you're not super into classic movies, black and white movies, um, it might be worth a watch just to see perhaps uh, certain influences in various aspects from just cameras and lighting, uh, some story um, inspirations with perhaps in terms of the plot um, or even, you know, uh, certain characters. Uh, it's just, yeah. It's definitely a film that's uh, worth watching. Um, Billy Wilder also uh, directed Sunset Boulevard, which is an, which is an excellent film. Um, I'll probably talk about that someday. But uh, anyway, wanted to talk about this for a while, and I just figured that was the best time because, well, just really good. And uh, it's the 80th anniversary, so I'm like, oh, you know, there you go. So, double indemnity. And yeah. I like how in the film they actually show, tell what double indemnity means. So, people who might not know, you know, you'll get to find out. So, or you find out. Anyway, yeah talking and kind of a bit tired so yeah anyway i'll uh let you all uh go and i hope all of you are doing well hope you're all having a great day having a great uh, uh have had a great week hope you'll have a great weekend and i'll see you all next time